Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number two in the CSRF module titled CSRF where token validation depends on request method. All right, let's get started. This lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. So we've got the vulnerable parameter is the email change functionality. It attempts to block CSRF attacks, but only applies defenses to certain types of requests. Okay, so they have some kind of uh, CSRF defense. However, it's incomplete and doesn't apply to all types of requests. To solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. So the goal over here is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability to change the email address of the user. You can log in to your own account using the following credentials, and we've got our credentials right over here. All right, let's access the exercise. And while that opens up, we'll open up Burp Suite Professional. So if you don't have the professional version, don't worry. For the first part of the video, we'll solve it using Burp Suite Pro. And in the second part of the video, we'll script the exploit on our own. So you don't need a professional version to complete this exercise. Hit next and then start Burp. Okay, so Burp already started and we're waiting on Port Swigger. Seems to have errored out, so let's open it up again. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set our proxy setting in the browser to send requests to burp. Now hit my account. It should be intercepted in the proxy, which it is. Now I'm going to set intercept to be off. Next, I'm going to log in with the credentials that we've been given to access the vulnerable functionality. So the password was Peter. Hit login. And here we go. So this is the vulnerable function. We're going to set intercept back to on and change the email address to test at test.ca. So hit update email. And here we go. Let's send this to repeater and set intercept to be off. So we'll be working from repeater from now on. on. All right. So notice the analysis section over here. This is from the previous lab. We had said that in order for a CSRF attack to be possible, it has to satisfy three conditions. The first one is that you have to have a relevant action. So something that is important and if compromised can lead to dangerous consequences. And in this case, it's similar to the previous lab where we had an email change functionality. So the reason this is a relevant action is because if I can manage to change the email address of your account, then I can use it in order to reset the password of your account and fully compromise your account. So there's dangerous consequences to me being able to change your email address. So this is definitely satisfied. The second condition is cookie-based session handling. So in order for this to work, session handling has to be done using cookies. And in this case, it is. It uses a cookie that is called session. And this is the value of the cookie over here. So this is satisfied just like it was in the previous lab. And the last condition over here is no unpredictable request parameters. Because this is a pre-made request, uh, the attacker needs to know all the parameters that are required for all the requests to be successful. And that's why you can't have unpredictable request parameters. Now, at first look over here, you could see there's an email, which the attacker already knows because the attacker only changes it to the email address that the attacker wants. The next parameter over here looks to be random. So there's a CSRF token, which at first glance makes it seem like that this is not vulnerable to CSRF. However, depending on how this was implemented, so the functionality behind the CSRF token generation, it might still be vulnerable. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new section, testing CSRF tokens. And we'll build on this one with each lab. So the first thing that I usually do is change the request method from post to get. And the reason I do that is because usually the way applications are built is if you need to send data 
to the application, you use a post method. However, if you want to get data from the application, you use a get method. So usually you only set CSRF tokens on post methods because they're used to send data to the application. Now, if you place a CSRF token on a get method, it doesn't really matter because it usually just outputs data from the application and with a CSRF attack, you can't force the application to send that data to you. So usually it doesn't matter that you have a CSRF token on a get method or not. However, if the application allows you to change a post request to a get request and send data to the application, so use a get method in order to send data to the application, then this might be vulnerable to CSRF. So to do that, we're going to right click and select change request method. You can do that whether you're using the professional version or the community version. So I'm going to click change request method and it changed it to a get request. Now, usually this fails because you don't want to use a get method in order to send information to the application. However, this application might be vulnerable and allows it. So let's hit send and we get a 302. And if we follow the redirection over here, you could see that it did pass and our email, let's make that a little bit bigger. Our email is right over here and it got changed. So what I'm going to do right now is go back. Now notice in the get request, I still have an unpredictable parameter. So it's not like I can fish the user using this CSRF token because I have no knowledge of this CSRF token beforehand. So the test case that I'm going to test for is remove the CSRF token altogether because usually applications only employ CSRF tokens for post methods and not get methods. So this might work. Let's hit send and see if we get a 302 and we do. Now to make sure that it does actually change it, I'm just going to say test2 at test.ca, hit send again, and then follow the redirection and check if test2 is in the application and it is. So this is definitely vulnerable to uh, CSRF and the reason it is, so the reason this is satisfied is because the request can be changed. So the request method can be changed to get, which does not require CSRF token. All right. So all three conditions satisfy, and so it's vulnerable to uh, CSRF. Now notice over here, if we do it using the post method and I lost my request, it's not letting me go back to the post one. So we're going to go to proxy, HTTP history, and send this one to repeater. So this is our original request. So if we look at it over here and hit send, you get a 302. However, if you remove the CSRF token from the post request, hit send, and it says missing parameter CSRF. So it's definitely checking the CSRF token for post requests, but it's not checking them for get requests. But since the application allows us to change the method to a get request, which let's do right now. So change request method, hit send, and all of a sudden it works again. So this is vulnerable to uh, CSRF. Now to exploit this, we're going to right click Click on engagement tools and generate CSRF POC. This is only available in the professional version of Burp Suite Pro. However, again, if you don't have the professional version, that's completely okay. We're going to script it on our own in the second part of the video. So the first thing you want to do is click on options, include auto submit script and hit regenerate. What that does is it automatically submits the form when the page loads. All right, so you've got an HTML element, you've got a form element over here that submits this request. So the change email request, which is right over here. Notice that over here it submits uh, one parameter, which is the email. So test at test.ca. We're going to change that to three to ensure that it's working properly. And then it has a, an input type of submit that submits the request. And again, because we said auto submit the request, it automatically submits this request for us. So we're going to copy the HTML, go to the browser, select go to exploit server, 
put it in the body over here. So what the exploit server is doing is it's hosting our script. And then we're going to click view exploit. And it should automatically submit. And here we go. It says your email is test3 at test.ca. So we've successfully managed to, to change the email address. However, we're not getting the congratulations. You've solved the exercise. And that's probably because we didn't go through the steps in the exploit server. So the first thing we need to do is probably store it. Go down, deliver the exploit to the victim. And then it should complete it. Here we go. So this emulates a victim user clicking on the link that you sent to that user. And then when uh, the victim user clicks on the link, the email is changed in the background. Again, it might not seem so obvious with the exploit server that we're using right now. However, if you stick around to the second part of the video, you'll see us host it on our own server and then click on it as if we're the victim user and the email gets changed in the background without the victim user knowing that it happened. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability using Burp Suite Pro and manually using the Community Edition, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the share and subscribe button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.